Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. I'm Reverend Tomas. Well, and we are going to talk about magic today. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so, forewarning, I am not a magician. I am not one who performs magic tricks at parties, nor anything like that. What we're going to talk about is magic in the sense as it's presented in A Course in Miracles, which as you may know, is quite a bit different than the way we think of it here in the world. We think of someone pulling a rabbit out of a hat. And that's what we think of as magic or some kind of what we would consider miraculous, you know, something that defies the Newtonian laws of physics, like levitation, and like Yoda moving his hand and manipulating objects from a distance, that sort of thing. So in describing what magic is in the course, there's been a lot of commentary on this and quite a bit of misunderstanding because as you know, A Course in Miracles uses words differently sometimes like atonement and forgiveness, which does not at all mean the same thing in A Course in Miracles as it means commonly here in the world. And magic, well, that's another one of those terms so we're having this conversation in the context of the manual for teachers, which is where we are in the video series here. It's specifically question 17. How do God's teachers deal with magic thoughts? How does a spiritual practitioner deal with magic thoughts? Hey, how does anyone deal with magic thoughts? What's a magic thought? <laughs> That's an excellent question. So magic in the course is defined in a certain way. Let's go back to the summary from the very, very first couple of pages of A Course in Miracles. This course can be summarized in, this, in the following way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That is a summary of all of A Course in Miracles. And if you're ever in need of a summary, like an elevator speech or a party trick or something like that, you can simply restate this. It's worth coming back to over and over and over again. It is the summary of this course. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. A magic thought is a thought that something that's unreal can heal us. It's a thought that something that's unreal can protect or save us. So what would this thought look like? Well, let's use an example. Let's say you and someone that you live with get into an argument I know. <laughs> well, hopefully that doesn't happen, but let's just say that you do and you want to get away from this person. You want to shut yourself off. So you go into another room and shut the door. What happens? Well, you, if, unless the other person follows you in to the room, you're in a separate physical space. What is that physical space? It's just four walls. What's going on in your mind? You're still upset, aren't you? Right? So the upset follows you. And the magic thought of sealing yourself off in a protective enclosure in a room, in this case, does not heal you, does it? Because healing does not take place at the level of four walls. Healing does not take place at the level of fences and walls, to put it differently. Healing is of the mind. 
Nothing unreal exists, remember. So things that God did not create, such as a wall, such as a barrier of any kind, and a wall, a room with four walls and a door and a floor and a ceiling and you know, even cool artwork in the background or something. God didn't create that. It's designed to keep separate, right? What did God create? Well, the Son of God, who we really are. And if you are familiar with the course, especially in the workbook, you will know that there are, well, 20 straight lessons devoted to the idea that I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So a magic thought is a thought that Anything that God did not create, like four walls, like different countries, like a fenced-in subdivision, a gated community, a flak vest, anything, really, anything that God did not create. And my magic thought is the thought that that can save us that that can heal. Now, a flak vest might come in very handy in certain lines of work, and it may save your physical life. So that's good. It doesn't bring ultimate healing. The healing is of the mind. A Course in Miracles is very direct and very specific about this because we need that specificity here, don't we? We need to hear this very poignantly, very succinctly, multiple times until we get it through our adult learners' heads, figured out that this may be worth paying attention to. <laughs> So how does a teacher of God slash spiritual practitioner slash anyone deal with magic thoughts? First thing to do, not attack them. What happens when we attack? We make something real to us. When we shut the door, we make our enclosure real to us. When we lash out at someone, we make the separation real to us. It's not real, but it's real to us. Here we are in the world thinking this is reality. I often do this if you're just tuning in the body. This, this thing, which by the way is an image on your screen that you're watching. It's projected onto your screen. So here we are, apparently, and we are faced with this dilemma, are we not? Because we've made all of this real. This is an idea that the ego does not want us to entertain. Hence the resistance that you may be feeling to this. Perfectly natural. Really, it's perfectly okay and natural. <laughs> and Jesus tells us in the, the, the workbook, in the very start of the workbook that all we're to do is simply do the exercises. We don't have to believe them, which is very important. You may have come from a fundamentalist religious background or whether it was fundamentalist or not, you may have come from a tradition or various traditions that said you have to believe something this way. Here's what you believe. Well, you. If you don't believe any of this, that's perfectly all right. It's not required to go ahead and think about it, to try it out for yourself. So in that sense, skepticism is perfectly fine. It's part of the path, isn't it? I mean, really, it's, it's totally, totally part of the path. So when we attack something, we make it real 
to us. So how does the teacher of God deal with a magic thought? Well, if someone were to say to me, all right, I got into an argument with my spouse yesterday. I went into the room, slammed the door to have my own little uh, pity party. Some people might admit that, others not so much. But you know, you're in there, you're stewing. The conflict is still very real to you. So what I would do is not heap more reality on that and say something like your best friend might say oh, oh what an asshole why well, he did that again what the actual something like that yeah there's no point in doing that and in fact it's very damaging from the standpoint of a teacher student relationship because what we don't want to do is heap more perceived reality on the situation. We don't want to make an opponent where there is none. So how would a teacher of God then deal with this situation? Let's say the woman or, or man, whoever it is, maybe a child, right, that ran into a room and decided that they were going to attempt to shut the conflict out. Now, whoever that is, and maybe this is something that you're dealing with right now. Let's say you reached out to me and said, this is what I'm going through. What I would not do is I would not just say what someone else might say. I wouldn't agree with you that so-and-so is completely out of line, even if they actually are. I'm not going to help you make the conflict real because it's not real. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit how to answer you. That's the key. And really, you can boil it down to that. We think we know all the answers. I don't know. So think of it this way. Your situation, let's say you message me about this argument and, and you locked yourself in your room, you went and you thought whatever you thought, whatever that is, and you're asking for my suggestions or guidance or advice. And the last thing I want to do is make that conflict real and agree with you that so-and-so was completely out of line and behaved poorly, even if they really did. What I don't want to do is make the sense of separation real. It's not. It's not. There is no other with whom to be in conflict. Doesn't feel like that in this example, does it? doesn't feel like that most of the time in the world, but we may have certain little glimpses of that. What am I going to do if you ask me that? I'm going to ask my teacher how to answer this and say, please direct me. I'm going to give it over to my inner teacher. We think in the world, because we're trained to think, I mean, let's give ourselves a little bit of grace here. We're all conditioned in more or less the same way to trust our individual judgment. And it's not automatic for us to let that go and accept that there is a, well, a different power. Call it a higher power if you want to. It's actually not higher than you are. But if we don't know who we really are, it can appear that way. So use that language if it suits you. Ask your inner teacher. That's what the Course says. That's what I'd like to say here, is when you turn a situation over to the universe, if you want, to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, to your guide or guides, to Buddha, to your Lama, your, your Imam, right, Rabbi, anyone, right? When you turn the solution over and say, what do I do here? I don't know what to do. That is absolutely essential on the path. 
because we are disidentifying with the ego. The ego says, no, I know all the answers. I know all ends. Yeah, I'm the bomb, I'm the shit. You don't need anyone but me. I'll tell you what to do. Do this. And it may actually be effective some of the time, but half the time or more, it blows up in your face. Why? The ego doesn't know what it's doing. It can't know what it's doing because it was never created by God. Therefore, it's unreal. And as we know from the summary of A Course in Miracles, nothing unreal exists at all. And here in the world, when it appears to, what we do, to the extent that we're able to think about it in this way, is not create more conflict or reinforce the conflict in the mind of another person. That's what I will not knowingly do. So I ask how to respond. And that is a very, very good thing for all of us to do. Because do you know all ends of all situations, past, present, future, to the benefit, maximum benefit of every single being, every single living thing? Can you be 100% certain that making decisions solely by your individual self is going to yield this benefit throughout time and space, both of which are illusory? Can you rest assured of maximum benefit to all with what you're about to say or do? Can you? And when you honestly allow yourself to answer the question honestly, we're invited to ask our inner teacher for guidance and we will receive it. That is all. Not the kind of magic that we're thinking about, right? No, this is A Course in Miracles, after all. So we're going through the manual for teachers here, and we'll be back continuing on. This is question 17. Now, there are 27 of those uh, questions here in the manual. Then we'll go through a, a very handy component of A Course in Miracles called A Clarification of Terms. Those will be some really, really good, juicy discussions. So as always, I invite you to stay tuned, and thank you for joining.